Welcome back. With our newfound knowledge of components, let's build a tweet to put that knowledge to the test. The best way I found to build an application is to sketch out a rough draft before dr jumping into the deep end. A tweet consists of an avatar, handle name, time, message, reply button, retweet button, like button, and more options button. For a simple hierarchy like this one, Let's start from the top down. Basically, build the tweet component first, then its nested component. To get started, create a new project with create react app by running this command in your terminal. npm initiate react dash app static dash tweet and cd static dash tweet. Remember to do this in the directory that you would like to save all your applications. For me, I'm saving it on my desktop in a folder called react. The second part of this command will take you right into the project directory once created. The project was created with a few files we won't use. Let's go ahead and delete them with this command. rm source backslash app dot ampersand source backslash logo dot svg source backslash register service worker.js. With that taken care of, open up the project in Visual Studio Code. Remember, file, open, then select the static tweet folder. You'll notice here that the project has an index.html. We'll need to add Font Awesome as a style sheet. This will allow us to use their icons for the buttons we'll be creating. Add font awesome by putting this line inside of the head tag. Moving on, you'll also see that an index.css file was generated in the source directory. Open it up and replace its contents with this tweet class. This is just some basic CSS to give our tweet some style. Right now, we're only assigning a border of one pixel, solid, light gray color, a width of 564 pixels, the minimum height would be 68 pixels, padding around our border of 10 pixels, it's going to be displayed flex, font family will be Helvetica, uh, font size is 14 pixels, and line height is 18 pixels. Next, let's move on to our index.js file. The content here will be very similar to the one from Hello World. So we're going to go ahead and import our React from React, import React DOM from React DOM, and import our index.cs. Then write our tweet function as we did our Hello World function before. And then we're just gonna throw inside there, tweet print something out. Then we're going to do our React DOM render, and render our tweet component to the root. If you notice, we have two new elements in our component. First, we have a new import call that is import dot backslash index dot CSS, which is importing a CSS file into a JavaScript file. What's happening is that behind the scenes, when Webpack builds our app, it sees the CSS import and learns that the index.js depends on index.css. Webpack reads the CSS file and includes it in the bundle JavaScript as a string to be sent to the browser. Lastly, we add class name equals tweet, which is the same as HTML class attribute used to define equal styles of element with the same class name. Class name value becomes the class attribute on the DOM node. Now let's run our application the same as before by opening our terminal in VS Code and typing in the command npm start. We got the bare bones. When we inspect the page using Google Developer Tools, look at the Elements tab and notice under Head there's a Style tag that we didn't put there. It contains the content of index.css. Let's add some components. Next, we'll need to build our avatar component. Shooting back over to index.js file, add function avatar, and that avatar is going to return an image tag. And in our image, we're going to need a source. So our source is going to be HTTPS www.gravatar.com backslash avatar backslash nothing. And then our image also needs a class name, which is going to equal 
avatar, and then an alt that's also going to equal avatar. The image tag is simple HTML. The only thing we are changing is class to class name. For that, we're going to use Gravatar to create our icon. Next, we'll need to add the avatar component to our tweet. So moving up to the tweet that we just created, we'll add the avatar component. And just like that, our tweet component is coming to life. Let's give our avatar a bit of style. In the index.css file, add this class. And there you have it. Our tweet is slowly but surely coming together. See you next time. So for our message component, we're going to do the same as we did for our tweet component. That message is going to return a div with a class name of message. And in between our div, we're going to put this is less than 140 characters. And then for our name with handle component, we're going to change it up and that's going to return a span with a class name of name with handle. And within that span, we're going to have another span with a class name of name, your name, close that span, and a secondary span at your handle, close that span, and close the initial span. Now we need to add our recently created message and handle name components into our tweet. So if we move up to our tweet, we'll add a div with a class name of content. And inside of that div, we're going to put name with handle component and our message component. And now shooting over to the index.css, we're going to add a bit of style to spruce up the look and feel. So we're going to add a name class and a handle class. Next up, we'll need to add the time and other button. We're going to construct these a little differently than our previous components. This component doesn't look like the functions you've been writing up to this point, but they are in fact still functions. They're arrow functions. These are shorthanded functions that automatically bind to the surrounding content. Here's a progression from a regular function to an arrow function so you can see what's happening. Here's a normal function component. It can then be written as an anonymous function and stored in a variable. It can then be simplified by removing the braces and the return. Let's finish up by creating our comment button, retweet button, and share button with arrow function. The i tag that is within our button arrow functions is simple HTML for icon and the class name is being pulled from Font Awesome. From here, all we have to do now is add our time and our buttons within our tweet function, and we are complete. Let's go ahead to the terminal and run our static tweet. We see that everything looks great. In the next lesson, we'll learn about props and how to make reusable components with props. See you next time.